Our scripture lesson this morning is the Easter Gospel from the Gospel of Mark in the 16th chapter. Let us listen for God's word to us today. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb And they had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, pour your Holy Spirit upon us this day that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts might be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus we pray. Amen. The women came to the tomb looking for the crucified one. Women play a central role in the Gospel of Mark, and they have continued to this moment, which they approach as a final act, what they see as a final act of love and service. They are coming to see the one they know as the crucified one. They approach, wondering among themselves how they will handle a difficult fact, There's a really large stone that's been rolled against the entrance to the tomb. What will they do with the stone? Who will roll it away? But as we read in Mark, the stone has been moved. It no longer blocks their entrance. And they enter the tomb and find not Jesus. Jesus does not appear in this Easter story. They find Not Jesus, but a young man dressed in white who tells him that Jesus of Nazareth, whom he identifies as the crucified, is no longer there. He points out the place where Jesus lay, set aside, discarded, no longer needed. And he tells them to go and to tell. Go and tell the disciples. Go and tell Peter. Go make sure they know he is going ahead of you all to Galilee. And of course, the women do not tell. They do not go. They do not tell. They do not do anything. They run. They flee. They say nothing. What does this mean? How is this good news? What is there to celebrate here? Mark alone among the four gospel writers whose work made it into the Bible, begins his writing with the beginning of the good news. That's the first line of Mark, the beginning of the good news. So this must be part of it. In fact, this must be the pinnacle of it, of this good news. So where is it? Friends, we find good news first in the fact that Jesus is no longer in the tomb. As the angel notes, the women have missed him. They've missed him because he has moved on. He has moved on to more pressing business than sitting around and waiting to be found alive. He doesn't have time. And he isn't giving us time to determine what we think, what might have happened, or what we believe has happened, or what we believe about him. Nope. He has gone on ahead to Galilee. Time is wasting and he has so much to do. Galilee was the site throughout Mark's gospel of profound demonstrations of Jesus' power, power to heal, 
power to preach, power to stand for and with God and those in need. And Galilee was also the site of deep misunderstanding about who he was and what he was about. There is so much to do now that the secret is no longer secret. Now that people will understand, people who saw him be crucified, people will see him alive and know that life has changed. All of life has changed. And now that people know that, there is so much to do. There is good news. And the good news is found in the fact that Jesus is no longer in the tomb, but is on the move making waves, doing work, sharing this good news, and changing life for the better with everyone he meets. And we are assisted in our search for good news today by looking at the use of this text throughout the history of the church. From the early centuries of the life of the Christian community, this text was used dramatically. On this day, for centuries, this text was the text that they used to to enter the service. People came to know it, uh, albeit in Latin, by heart. We're going to do it in English today. Um, the angel would say, Whom do you seek in the tomb, O Christians? And the women would come and say, Jesus of Nazareth, O heaven dweller. The angel would say, He is not here. He is risen, just as he foretold. Go announce that he is risen from the sepulcher. What's going on here? Why would this drama figure so prominently in the worship practice of the church since its early life? Friends, to reenact something is to bring it into our day, into our life. It is to bring the past into the present, to make the past present, to make what was history, what was part of a story of people long dead, to make that story part of the story of people now part of the present story of the church, part of our story now. The reenactment of the story of Easter morning from Mark gave an entrance to the church of the present. The church members who heard and took part in the drama were able through this reenactment, through this remembering, through this sacred drama to realize that they were now in the story. They were now part of the story. It was their story. Not just the story of the women and the angel and the crucified one. Their story was happening now, and they were part of it. We, too, are given entrance through this story into the good news. We are given a chance for a new beginning. Of course, good news is also found in the fact that we know this story. Even though those women ran away afraid, we know this story. Mark is almost universally understood by scholars as the first gospel to have been written down. It was written down, scholars believe, in the late 60s and the last years before the destruction of Jerusalem in A.D. 70. That is, 30 or 40 years after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. The gospel of Mark is understood to have been written down in a hurry. It was written down in a hurry by someone, or a group of someones, who thought this had to be written down because the world was ending. Jerusalem was about to be overrun by the Romans. The sky was falling. So this story to survive had to be written down. How did the author of the gospel know this story if the women who knew it never told anyone? Of course, part of the good news, friends, is the story was Told. The story was too good to keep quiet. It was told. It was told in the early days, and it continued to be told as the church continued to grow and evolve and mature. We are given a chance, friends, to live with the women in the fear of that moment, the fear that comes with the realization that the good news is really good, really true really real. The unresolved end end ending both gives us an entrance and leaves us with a task. This text is an invitation to begin, to begin anew. We, all of us, we are now part of the story. 
The church throughout time is part of the story. We have walked to the cross with Christ through these weeks and months, eaten with him a holy meal, and watched him hang on a cross and die. And today, today, God miraculously and amazingly has granted a new beginning, a new start that includes us, all of us. We are called by Jesus to follow him, to go, to tell, to seek where he is leading. Friends, let us take up this new call on this new day in this new beginning granted by God and let us tell the good news we have come to know that Jesus the crucified one is no longer in the tomb and that we are following him into the world. Christ is risen and has gone ahead of us and calls us to follow. Alleluia. Amen.